dear brothers and sisters, it's wonderful to get a chance to be together with all of you. And as all of us gather together in different parts of the world, we think about what is truly important that we should focus on. You know, many times in life, we wonder, can we find God? Is God available to us? Can we experience God? God the Creator, who brought all creation to being, is God very busy with all creation? Because we know that there are about 7.8 billion people living in this world, and there are 8.4 million of species, and so we wonder if uh, God the Creator has any time for us? Can we see God? Can we hear God? Can we uh, be with God? And so these questions come in our life at some time or another. So there was a seeker who was trying to find out about God. He was searching. He went and read many, many books. He went to many, many traditions and he asked everyone of some mechanism to find God. And as he's searching, he's going to one place to another, to another, to another, that can he find God? Is there any secret of knowing God? And so someone told him that there's a saint who found God. And so he thought, oh, I should go there and I should ask the saint what the secret is of finding God. So he goes to the place where uh, the saint is and he talks to the saint and says, uh, I am here to find God, so please help me. So the saint says, okay, come with me. So he takes him to the corridor of the building, takes him to his library. And when he goes in the library, the saint is taking one book out and putting it, taking another book out and putting it, taking another book out and putting it, and as the seeker, is looking at the saint, collecting all his books. He said, oh, I have read most of the books. I went to this library, I went to that library, I went here, I went here, and I've read many, many books. But the saint kept on taking books out and books out and books out. And then when the saint was done, he said, okay, these books can help you. And the seeker is thinking, you know, I have read so many books, how will these books help me? And when he saw, there were like hundreds and hundreds of books. So he said, I need a truck to take this home to read them. And as he's talking to the saint, his phone rings. And he takes the phone out of his pocket and he shuts the phone down. Well, so the saint says, oh, well, you have... Uh, a telephone, you have a mobile phone. And he said, yes. He says, okay, okay, I, I realize now that you guys don't read any books anymore. He says, okay, you can, you can go and read uh, all the e-books on these subjects. And it will help you to find out about God. And then the seeker started to look at the books. There was an encyclopedia. He looked at another book, there was an atlas. There were some books, and there were books after books on animals, the life of the different animals. There were books on plants, various kinds of plants. There were books on history. There were books on geography. And then there were all these phone directories, not only of the city and town, but also of cities and towns of many other countries. And so the seekers started to wonder, I wanted to find out about God, and what is this saint telling me? And so he asked him, you know, these books have nothing to do with God. Even if I read them, how will they help me? So the saint said, I want you to read the books. I want you to travel all around the globe. I want you to meet everyone whose name is listed in these books. And I want you to come back and then I will tell you what the secret to finding God is. So now the seeker is thinking to himself, 
thinking, how am I going to do that? And then as he's thinking, he's thinking, he says, okay, you know, everyone says this saint has found God and let me try and see how long it will take me to do this. And so he starts to think. He thinks if I travel around the globe, it's going to take me a lot of time. He says, let me find some shortcuts. He starts to Google things. He starts to find out about all the different animals who live in this world. He tries to look at the biggest zoos in all the various cities in the world. Because he feels that in the zoo he'll have many, many animals will be living together. So in one place he can meet all of them or he can see them, he can find out about them. He starts to do the same thing with plants. He looks at the botanical gardens all over the world. He starts to look at various plants. He goes and looks at the forms. He also starts to think, oh, today there's a lot of organic stuff going on. I better look at some organic forms too. He looks at those things. And as he's going through and collecting things, then he starts to think about how am I going to meet the people? You know, in the telephone directory there are thousands and thousands and thousands of people. And how do I meet them? He says, oh, wow, well, maybe I should go on Facebook. So he opens an account on Facebook and he's checking the people in the phone books who are on Facebook and he gets to see them. And then someone told him that the younger guys don't go on Facebook anymore. You need to go to Instagram. So now he's going on the Instagram, he's trying to meet the younger people who are in the phone book. And slowly, slowly, slowly he's meeting people. And then he realizes that there are some people in the phone book who are neither on Facebook, neither on Instagram. So he starts to call them up to meet them. He got so many people. In this part of the world, other parts of the world, he's traveling. One, he's done one day. And so he's met with everyone in the phone book. He's met with the animals. He's met with all the plants. He's traveled around the globe. And then he comes back. And as he comes back, and as he goes to the saint, he says, oh, I have met this and I've done this and I've done this. I've done everything that he asked me. And so what is the secret of finding God? So the saints say the secret of finding God was in your journey as you met everyone. And you should know the secret by now. So the secret gets bewildered. He said, what do you mean I should know the secret? I did everything you told me. And he told me you were going to tell me what the secret is of knowing God. And so the saint said, you know, you're meeting everyone as you went along is what the secret is. And he said, if you need a bigger explanation, I'm going to give you through the verses written by another saint. And he said, who is this other saint? He said, this is Sant Darshan Singh Ji Maharaj. I'm going to read one of his verses and in the explanation of a verse you'll know how to find God. And so this is the verse that the saint repeated. And this verse is written by Sandarshan Singh Ji Maharaj. And in this verse he says, Tamam parto hain akse parto. Tamam parto hain akse parto. Tamam jalve hain akse jalva. Kahan se lao misale surat ki aap sa dusra kaha hai. So if we translate this into English, it says every image is a reflection. All splendor a reflection of your radiance. Where can I find any resemblance to you when there is no one else like you? So the saint told the seeker, he says that God's image is in all of creation. 
He says, every image is a reflection of God. Every one that you see, whether it be another human being, whether it's in this country or another country, whether they follow one religion or another, whether they speak one language or another, whether they're more educated or less educated, whether you see an animal or a bird or a fish or a plant, anything which is living is a reflection of God. Since every image is a reflection, everything that you experience, everything that you see at the physical level is a reflection of God. And then he says, like, God's radiance resides in each soul. All splendor, a reflection of a radiance. So God's radiance, the love, the light of God, which brings joy to everyone, is being reflected in each and every soul. And the saint, as he's explaining this verse, you know, told the seeker, he says that as you went through and as they sent you to the world to meet one person or another and another and another, you were meeting a manifestation of God because God has billions and billions and billions of manifestations. And every form in creation that we meet is a part of God. And every living form has a soul in it. As long as the soul is in the human body, that soul is alive, that body is alive. As long as the soul is in an animal body, that animal is alive. As long as the soul is in a fish, the fish is alive. So as long as the soul is in some living form that that form is alive but when the soul leaves that form for good then there is no life in existence so the saint made the seeker understand that finding god was a process which can be easily experienced by each and every one of us because once we realize that God is in everyone else, we also get to the realization that God is within us also. And when we realize that God is within us also, then we don't need any mechanisms to go away to find God. We don't need to leave our homes, we don't need to go to certain areas of the world, we don't need to go to any other place because the realization that God is within us makes us get to that state where we understand that to know God, we need to learn how to go within. We need to learn the techniques of, of exploring our inner self. And that process by which we can go within ourselves is called meditation. God is in each and every one of us. And as we learn the techniques of going within, as we learn these meditative techniques, then we are able to experience God as we rise above physical body consciousness, we experience what are called the two primal manifestations of God, that being the divine light and the divine sound. And, and all of our places of worship have representations of the light and sound. Whether candles are lit, whether uh, we ring a bell, you know, there are signs of light and sound in practically all religious places, signifying the divine light and sound of God, which we can experience within ourselves. So we can experience divine light, which enlightens us. We can hear divine sounds, which puts us in, in a state of ecstasy, like we've never experienced before. And so when we are in tune with the divine light and sound of God, then we're getting closer and closer to God. God is available to each in every one of us, irrespective of where we live, irrespective of where we were born, irrespective of whatever we're doing in life. Because we are God's children. And being God's children, we have every right to know God. And the saints have been telling us from time immemorial that we who find ourselves in the human body have all the faculties that are required to know God. 
that our soul is a real self. And our soul could transmigrate from one existence to another. It could be in a human body, it could be in an animal body, it could be in a bird body, it could be in a fish body, it could be in the body of an insect, it could be any living form. But it's only in the human body that all the faculties that are required to know us truly have been provided. And so we have to make use of this golden opportunity. God has been very gracious to give us this opportunity. God loves us tremendously. And as we learn the techniques of going with them, then we start to experience God. It's an unfolding of the divine. And as we start to experience the divine light and the divine sound of God, then we get happy, we get joy as we are in a state of bliss. And we want to be in that state more and more and more. It's just a question of taking our attention away from the world outside and focusing it within ourselves. Right now we live at the level of our senses. So we experience through a sense of sight, a sense of hearing, a sense of smell, a sense of taste and a sense of touch. And everything we experience through these senses we take to be real. What we're focused on is a world of illusion because this is a, a reflection. The physical world is a reflection of the astral world, astral reflection of the causal world, and so these are reflections of the spiritual worlds. And so when we find ourselves as being focused in the physical world, and when we start to think of everything here as being real, because that's what we are experiencing through our senses, we need to rise above that. And so we find a quiet place, as we find a quiet place, a sense of hearing is withdrawn, so that doesn't distract us. More than one person can sit together and meditate, but we make sure no part of our body touches someone else, so the sense of touch is withdrawn. We're definitely not going to eat as we meditate, so the sense of taste is withdrawn. We feel God created all creation. Every place is holy. There's no need to light in senses or change the atmosphere and make it more spiritual. So the sense of smell is withdrawn, and then we close our eyes, we're drawing a sense of sight. Making sure that our eyeballs are straight, focus 8 to 10 inches in front of us. Now, as we close our eyes, in the experience of seeing in front of us, in the beginning we'll experience darkness. But then with time, we start to experience what to us looks like flashes of lights, circles of lights. What is actually happening is that as we close our eyes, our mind is distracting us, it sends us thoughts. And thoughts could be of anything. What happened yesterday, what will happen tomorrow, how's our health, how's the health of the family, what is going on with the children, any thought is a distraction. So the saints say to get us to a state of no thought, let's use the energy of the mind. And we do that by repeating God's name. So we take the mind's energy and focus on God, but we do this repetition only mentally. We do it out loud, our ears would hear it and we would be distracted. So we do a mental repetition of God's name. So when you close your eyes, just repeat any name of God that you feel comfortable with. And as this goes on, with time, you will start to experience as if the lights are stabilized. What is actually happening is that the light of God is not coming from anywhere from the outside. The light of God is within each and every one of you. When you close your eyes, when you've withdrawn your senses from the world outside, when your mind is still, you experience the light. When you're distracted, you experience darkness. So with time and practice, as your concentration gets to be stronger and stronger, you experience the lights more and more and more. To you, it seems like they're stabilized. And they experience many, many other vistas which are very loving, they bring a lot of love to you, a lot of joy to you, put in a state of calm and peace. And then you experience realms of bliss like you never experienced before. So let us all meditate for a few minutes. Please sit as comfortably as you can. Close your eyes very gently, just like you close them when you go to sleep. Your eyeballs should be straight, focus 8 or 10 inches in front of you. And as you close your eyes, those of you who have been initiated in the mysteries of the beyond, please do a simran. 
and those of you who are new here, repeat any name of God that you feel comfortable with. I pray to God Almighty and to the three great masters of the past century, Hazur Baba Savan Singh Ji Maharaj, Param Sant Kapal Singh Ji Maharaj, and the gracious Master Sandarshan Singh Ji Maharaj, to help each and every one of us connect with the divine power within and to experience the divine light in its effulgence. So we'll be sitting for a few minutes. I'll be getting you out of the state in a few minutes. And my best wishes are with each and every one of you.
प्लीज लिव ऑफ छोड़ दीजिए जी